Bruce, I know you've been scouting, obviously. Um, don't know if you realize or not, but you're the only team to hold TCU to under 70 points in both meetings this season, and one in three in the league to hold them to under 45% shooting in both meetings. What what has impressed you most about the way K-State's played defense against TCU this season? Well, I think one of the best things about our team is they, they listen to the scouting report. They take it to heart. Coaches do a great job preparing, uh, you know, giving them a, a plan. And then... And, and, if you know it makes it so much easier on the coaches if they buy in and and you know now the third time are they going to bring a couple new little twists to it you know we'll have to see but um, i mean they're they got us last time the only the stuff they got us on was the, a lot of the back door cuts spacing they kind of i think it was oklahoma state game because they guard so well at Okie State, they they started doing that kind of open motion, and they got some layups. They got us on it, but for the for the most part, you know, it's it's very is is good. Just like he, you know, with Mono the other day, he's good at staying in the people. He can, you know, he stays in the Robinson, but it's it's the other people. It's it's Mac. I've said he's a really good ball ball screen defender. He's oval, agile, um, and then but the, still after that, it's still the other guys being in the right position, reading it. Uh, you know, like I said, by into the scouting report. Uh, the other thing is, is transition. You got to, they're so good in transition, you got to get back. Um, and, you know, we always talk about form a wall, you know, get that, that wall to get Robinson so he can't go into the paint. He's got to go east west. And uh, if you do that, it gives you, gives you a chance. You got to limit their easy baskets. I mean, they're one of the highest scoring teams in the country, and you hold them to nearly 20 points below their average each, each game. What kind of pride do you guys take in that? I think they, our guys take a lot of pride. You know, I, I talked to them, I don't know, this is probably going back in December, and I might have mentioned to you guys that, you know, what's going to be something that gives you a difference maker once you get into the league? And, you know, we, we talked about defense, and, and we made some strides. You know, Barry's good on the – Mac has learned the concepts. Uh, you know, Xavier, I think, has taken nice steps where he's a – got two lockdown defenders on the perimeter. Um, and then Dean is, is just a good position defender and, and knows, knows the system and knows where to be and reads things for us. So, uh, you know, it, it's uh, – you know, I think you just add all that stuff, good scouting reports, guys locked in, good defenders. And, and hopefully success we'll see on Thursday at 11.30. Kamal's been a little bit up, a little bit down <clears> since <throat> he came back from injury. Are you looking at the postseason as kind of a way for him to hit that reset button and just start spreading? Well, uh, you know, originally we didn't think he'd even be back till last week. And, you know, you know, I guess the miracles of modern medicine got him back early, uh, you know, and, and – he, uh, I thought he, he really struggled against TCU last, last week and came back, had a couple good days of practice. I think I mentioned to you guys that. And he, I thought the best thing he did Saturday was he had some energy. He, you know, six on our play hard, took a charge. He was active on some of his better defense. And, you know, just focus on the things you can do and help us. And, you know, he missed that first one. He didn't turn down a second one. He got a little floater in there, but finally hit one. I know scoring means something to him, but, you know, he can still help our team and especially late in games you know I, I need his experience his intelligence and and free throw shooting and Cardi's still learning you know we can and, and we even went small ball at times with all three of those guys and um, you know I think that that makes us even more effective depending on matchups. I know the last time you guys played them go into that game Vlad had scored in like double figures in like 20 straight games you guys held the seven except for that late three he was basically a non-factor I mean, do you think that's doable again to kind of well, I, I thought the first time we had a, held him down first half, if you go back, second half he got a little bit loose. Um, you know, a lot of it is he plays off of Robinson, and he, they, they, he, there's good duel, you know, getting in the paint, knowing where to go. Uh, I, and, again, you got to give some credit to Mac and Dean and our big guys that, you know, they they know him. They know, you know, we always talk about strengths and weaknesses too. And it's, a, you know, first time you're playing, you learn. Second time you got more info on them. You know, it's it's our whole league, and now it's the third time. Now, can we even can we even be a little better? But I, you know, he, he's going to score. He's a good player. He's got a great touch. You, you just can't let him get in his comfort zones. And that was one thing we talked to Mac about. You know, fight if he get if he catches, he's scoring. So it's the best way to play defense is not let your guy catch the basketball. The third time you play a team, how do you balance between putting in new wrinkles and new sets and trying to be different, as opposed to just being good at what you well, do. you got to do what you do. I mean that, but if you can find a couple little new things, uh, 
for us was reading their defense and again how they tweak things you know they they'd made some changes from first game to second thing the game defensively I think they one of the things they've made improvement they've been very good offensively like you guys talked about but he, they're better on defense and they fought us a little more um, than the first time they, they you know Bain is aggressive some other guys are aggressive on D uh, you know so they you know that that you know that was probably the difference maker for us in that game that they they were able to disrupt us a little bit because we've scored pretty well for the most part and we really struggled scoring if it wasn't for Dean you know we would have uh you know they I think they made the decision they weren't going to let Barry and let Cartier get into the paint and make plays and they're going to make us make reads off of that and make some shots from the perimeter and we'll see what happens Thursday. Henrik Williams was the only player from TCU to score double figures against K-State in both games this season he shot 12 of 23 from the field overall against K-State. The rest of the team shot 35 of 85. How, how much on this third meeting is it? are you keyed in on Williams or do but, you take care of the other guy? I think Xavier's, you know, again, he, he gets loose. He's smart. He knows how to play. Um, you know he's got a, he's big. He gets that that jump shot off quick on the quick kicks. I think he surprised Xavier a couple times how he caught it and got it up quick before he could even close out. So we're gonna you know hopefully do a better job of getting to him on those closeouts. He got us on a couple layup back doors. He got us in transition. I mean that's why he's all conference. I mean he's a really good player. He's a veteran, knows how to play. Um, you know it's a great challenge for Xavier. How much do you think Kansas City can help you? Wise heading into oh, I'm sure if you win a few games or win the whole thing, obviously it's got to help you a little bit. I, I don't know if it can jump you, you know, astronomical spots, but you know we're playing TCU, the second best RPI team in our league, I believe, second or third. Um, and then, and then it, depending on what happens that next night, you might have another, you know, high RPI game. So, you know, it could it it could jump and and solidify a little bit. Uh, Hopefully the committee members said, you know, hey, we are good. I, I'd, I'm sure there's still always – with everyone I, in our league, it's, there's so many question marks. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Us in the SEC, with, when you talk about nine teams out of ten have eight wins, I mean, I, it's almost impossible when you figure it out. It, it's, you know, and the SEC, I think, has eight or nine also, but now they have more teams and they don't play everyone twice, so that, you know, changes a little bit of dynamics. X hasn't uh, shot the ball very well of late, but he is averaging seven rebounds a game over his last four. He gets six assists for you in this last game. Do you feel like he can actually break out of the slump just by doing those other things and it'll lead to him scoring a little bit? I think the big thing is he can't worry about scoring, and that's what we emphasize. I think the, the TCU game, he, he – you know, he got in mentally, kind of got whipped early, missed some shots, and and then didn't, didn't do those other things that he's been so good at that's helped us win. And he he watched the film, he came back. I thought he had great energy against uh, Baylor. You know, he he was our leader on the play hard. He, you know, as you said, the the six assists, the the, the rebounds. I mean, he did a lot of good things for us, and um, he he can still be very effective. And he's you know you. Well, let's just talk about it. You know, I think I mentioned you know, have a clean heart, a clean uh, you know head, and worry about our team and not not having thoughts about you know this is me. I, I'm worried about myself. I got to worry about our what I can do to help the team to win. If you do that, usually you have success. What do you mean? Do you see Dean and, and Barry both get awarded? For their play this season, on the I, I I think it was well deserved. I didn't know. I mentioned I I didn't know if Dean would get first team. I thought it would be close. Um, I don't know the vote voting or uh, if they even release it, but uh, you know because you got so many good players and 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 he and in some ways Dean has done it quietly. You know and, and he's you know kind of really came on the scene, wasn't picked on any of the teams preseason. I don't think so. And then Barry just. You know, they both have put our team on their back. And, and so when Cam went down, took their games to another level, but great leadership, um, you know, done so many things that have, uh, that impressive. So it's, it's, it's great for them, good for our program. And I, but I told them also, you don't get those. Iowa State's got some really good players, but they didn't get the votes. You know, you got the votes because you ended up in the top, top part of your league and helped your team win. It's just like Wes. Wes, Wes gets attention exposure last year because we go on a run and win. So you want – you know, it's everyone has an ego, and it's great as long as you control it. If you if you want to have exposure and have success, you know, help the team win. Good things will happen. How different is the scouting process for your assistants in the Big Twelve tournament as opposed to the NCAA's, where you already know 
so much about the teams you could possibly. Well, oh, it's it's it you know it's a, it's much more now. It's just kind of reviewing for them. Hey, we just played TCU, right. whatever it was. It'll be eight nine days, right? And so uh, you know that it's for the coach. You know, Coach Corn has that. It, it's easy to kind of regroup. And go from there. Now, you know, the next next games, the coach has got to be prepared because, you know, as soon as we have a little, if we find a way to win, we have a little more extra time. But the NCAA, it's, it's, it's a scramble for Sunday, you know, Sunday night, uh, you know, getting tapes, uh, you know, just, you know, getting personnel, getting scouting reports from opponents. Uh, and, you know, it, it'll take a lot of time. It's like playing – the Big 12 teams the first time, you know, that you, you they put in, our coaches put in a lot of time, take a lot of pride in it, um, and that's why we have success because of that. Dean finished top 10 in scoring, rebounding, steals, and three-point percentage this year, and he's only the second Big 12 player to do that along with Kevin Durant. If you think back... Pretty good company. Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> uh, you think back not only your time at K-State, but back to Illinois as well. Where does he rank in terms of how versatile uh, of a player he is compared to... I mean, for me, I, it actually probably even goes back to Purdue. You know, it's it's a Brian Cardinal, Brad Miller kind of guys that we had at, at his size. Now, you know, you talk about Darren Williams and D. Brown and some of those guys, but they were different position. And, you know, I think that, you know, I, somebody mentioned Tom Miner Wyatt that – uh, the, all the offensive categories in he was in the top 10 and 11 out of 13 or 14 or something like that so it shows his versatility um, you know he I've said all along he's one of the better passers uh, he, he shoots the ball last year I gave him the sheet without names on I said okay if you want the, which player do you want to shoot field goals here looking at the percentages and, and he pointed at that guy I said well let's look who that is that's Dean Wade and then I went to the threes I said who would you want to shoot threes that's Dean Wade, you know. So you know, I think it, he he kind of chuckled and laughed, but may, maybe he's figured it out a little bit. That you know, you can see his confidence and uh, that he knows he's a good player. He's worked at it very hard, and um, you know, it, it's it's you know, you got to give him a lot of credit. He, he's done. He's made big strides from his freshman year. Going about how recently you guys played TCU, is, is that an advantage versus? I mean, you look at. More than a month that you played West Virginia or Kansas, so just playing them so recently does that help a lot? I hope so. You know, for the coaches, it does. For the players, we just watched that film last Thursday when we got you know, we're off Wednesday, so we watched that film Thursday, and then we almost basically showed the same film today. So it, it, and and I hope we have a little edge because we let one slip and. Uh, but you know we'll we'll and again it's that de- we played with great determination Saturday against Baylor. I'm really proud with, proud of them. Even when they made the run, you know that was when against TCU we didn't make the plays. And this time, you know Barry had three huge plays. Uh, he had the lob. He had the the corner threes. And obviously Xavier got it to him. Um, and then Barry had the low flash, and that was, you know, when they got it to five or six or whatever, now it got back to double digits, and now you can, you know, kind of coast in and make the free throws down the stretch. So, it, you know, now we'll have, you know, another opportunity to see if it – I would anticipate a close game. I mean, both – even though the game here, we got them, you know, they got it back where it was in, you know, in single digits, and we had to make free throws in place down the stretch. You're going to joke with Jamie Dixon about him maybe getting another technical. <laughs> I didn't even know he got it last Tuesday. I I, the, I said, where's the ball? And the official said there, and then he went like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, timeout. I didn't even I didn't even know he got a, t- a technical, to be honest. Barry, our players didn't know. Barry went out there and said, came running back, should I shoot? I said, shoot what? And and he said, the, the free throws. I said, you got fouled on the shot? And he goes, no, I think it's a technical. So I'm not sure what happened. I watched the film, our film, and I couldn't figure it out even from that. You feel, you feel like you guys get an edge with your with your defense against TCU. Oh, I know. I, I hope so. You know, but but I thought, like I said, they've defended well too. I, they've they've done a better job. I mean, now they gave up ninety on Saturday, but that was at Texas Tech, and Texas Tech is you know was was fighting their butts off to kind of get get their heads above water. So uh, you know, it, it'll it'll be interesting how, how it unfolds. Some some it's making shots too. That's a big thing. Any pressure from your players or staff to uh, to wear lavenders so you lose? Uh, somebody texted me the other night and said, can we wear lavenders again? But I think we're the home team, and I, uh, you'd have to get the okay from the Big 12, and, and they would have to okay it. So uh, you never know. Maybe they'll come out the second night. Sure. 
The conference has been so deep and competitive this year. So what do you think it is about your team that gives you guys a shot to make a run in the conference? Well, I, I think, you know, one, we have some pretty good players. Two, we, we have a, a coaching staff that uh, has put a lot of time in and, and got the guys to buy into scouting reports and things we just talked about. I think our defense makes a difference, gives you a chance. Uh, you know, but it, it, I think a key, you know, probably a big key, Cartier and, Cartier and uh, Cam played better the other day. So if, if we can get good numbers out of, out of those two with the – and then you guys brought up stack about Mac, you know, double figures undefeated. Um, you know, now you get – you know, when you ask about our team, balance is probably one of the biggest keys for us. When they're all cooking and playing, we're, we're pretty good.